Last year, we featured a Park Slope team, Allison Collard de Beaufort, who after experiencing the loss of three middle school classmates to pedestrian traffic accidents, well, she began advocating for better pedestrian safety throughout NYC. Now, she and her classmates at Brooklyn Tech are competing in the Samsung Solve for Tomorrow contest, and their idea is one of 15 national finalists. Here's part of a video Allison and her colleagues made to explain their concept. Three of my friends from middle school were hit and run over by cars all within 15 months. In cooperation with the Mayor's Vision Zero initiative, I created the Vision Zero Youth Council to raise awareness among all students in the city. Kids will be kids, and they won't always be fully aware of their surroundings. Smart technologies can help. Our project is to apply STEM and specifically signal processing in a Samsung watch app that alerts pedestrians when a vehicle is approaching at unsafe speeds. Regular sound waves can be described by their period and their amplitude. So different sound waves have different amplitudes or periods. A mathematician named Fourier showed that any wave can be uniquely characterized by the sum of trigonometric functions. The shorter a period, the higher its frequency. So the three waves we just saw can be shown on a histogram, one bucket for each frequency, and amplitude as their heights. This principle allows us to recognize an engine sound. When a car is stationary, the sound waves it emits are identical in all directions. When a car is moving towards us, however, the period of the sound wave it emits is compressed. This is the Doppler effect. Now let's code all this into an app for the Samsung Watch using the Tizen software development kit. So what does this code do? So this is running in an emulator on the Tizen SDK. It will be running on Samsung smartwatches. First, I'm going to test the app with the sound of my voice. Test, test, test. Now, I'm going to test the app with the recorded sound of a car. Now let's see this code in action. As a first step, we'll run the prototype on a laptop. We got, we got some good stuff right there. The next steps of our project are to decrease false negatives and reduce false positives. We also have to make sure the speed of the car is dangerous. So far, we haven't implemented the Doppler effect. We'd like to polish the app so that everyone can use it. Hopefully the future will look like this. Impressive. Saved by the app. <laughs> we should also mention that that video that you just saw was actually created by the students who are in the contests. Amazing. Especially Amazing. Good job. Extra points, Samsung. Come on. <laughs> well, voting for the Samsung Solve for Tomorrow contest lasts through March 31st, and you can vote more than once to help Allison and her classmates. And since we're homers here on BK Live, we root for the Brooklyn team naturally. <laughs> so we're going to tell you how you can vote, but here to tell us why you should vote are new. New York City Council Member Brad Lander. Welcome back to BK Live, sir. Thank you. Great to be here. Great to be here with Allison, well, especially. Well, speaking of Allison, you saw her in the video, and now I'm happy to introduce you to the Brooklyn Tech sophomore, Allison Collard de Beaufort. Welcome to BK Live. Thank you. It's nice to be here. Well, it's good to have you here, <laughs> potentially saving some lives. I hope so. This came, apart, uh, came about in part because of some very real, real-life consequences. Yeah, uh, three years ago, I lost three of my friends from my middle school in Brooklyn, and they were hit by cars and run over within the span of 15 months from each, of each other, and it was just horrible. Like, these tragedies impacted everyone, and it's heartbreaking to see. Yeah. You know, I, I do remember reading about you back then when you, you know, put the 40 teddy bears up along Prospect Park, and, you know, when I look back and I see this ap application now, it's like, when I said you were sending a message to the drivers to slow down by putting the teddy bears up. But now with the app, you're sending a message to the pedestrian. So what was that sort of transformation about, or was, where did that awareness come from? Not only do we need to tell the drivers, but we also need to tell the pedestrians. Well, nowadays with the amount of technology that people are being surrounded by, including our phones and just are like smartwatches now, people aren't as aware of their surroundings as they were before. And so this app, like, it's sort of like a second pair of eyes or ears or your, your only pair of eyes if you're blind or if you're deaf. Mm -hmm. And it 
helps you be more aware of your surroundings than you would be if you were walking across the street looking at your phone. That's right. Well, Absolutely. Council Member Lander, you're bringing the full force of the New York City <laughs> Council behind this initiative to get these votes and bring the win home to Brooklyn Tech and Allison's team. So how did you get involved? You're here. Well, uh, first I want to give real credit to Allison and, and her classmates, uh, you know, back when I first got to know her at MS-51 and now at Brooklyn Tech, who have taken a lot of steps to set up the Vision Zero Youth Council and actually in two of the places where her classmates uh, were killed in traffic crashes, we've made the streets safer. So on Prospect Park West, where Sammy Cohen's team was killed, the speed limit was reduced even before the citywide speed limit was reduced. Um, and cars go a lot slower now. Um, and then where uh, Naeem Uddin was killed on Kate and 7th, um, that intersection on all of Kate Avenue now is much safer because I do think first and foremost we want safe drive and we want to need safe streets um, and the Vision Zero Youth Council has really pushed that and pushed all of us to think about these as not as accidents but as crashes as things we can prevent and reduce and last year was the lowest on record in terms of pedestrian fatalities but still a couple of hundred too many yeah. and we've got to keep pushing for fewer but as, as Allison rightly points out while most of the responsibility is in the hands of both the city setting up the streets and the intersections and the drivers who are behind the, the vehicle, um, of course, we all want pedestrians also to be safe and aware. And we've all done it. We've all been on our phones and walked out into that street when we shouldn't have. And uh, this, uh, and we, you know, we need to be responsible ourselves, but we also having that technology that can help us is going to make a big deal. Um, you've seen already some technology people are starting to talk about that will go in the cars. Yeah. Uh, and car technology obviously can be safer, but helping us be safer as well is just really smart. And it's no surprise that Brooklyn Tech students uh, came up with this idea. But we all have to help them win. So, yes, you got to. Uh, uh, well, Allison will talk a little about what you got to do to vote. Well, before we get to the voting, can you tell us about the Samsung uh, Solve for Tomorrow contest? Sure. So, the competition um, asked participants to solve a problem in their community using STEM. And so, I've been working so closely with street safety that I've thought of. Well, my family and my friends thought of an app yeah. that would be related to street safety. Awesome. And this is a national contest, I do want to point out. And right. you are one of 15 finalists, which is yeah. such an amazing accomplishment in and of itself. Absolutely. Okay. Now, we saw the app. How far away does the app work? What are, how does it, exactly does the app work? Well, the app itself uses the microwave, the, microwave, the sound waves right. of, uh, of an engine's, sound, uh, engine's car. Of a car's engine, I don't even know what it is. Yeah, of a car's engine. It uses the room. Yeah, yeah, it uses that. And then <laughs> it uses the microphone of the smartwatch, and using the Doppler effect, it's able to recognize how far or how fast the car is going and if it's moving towards you. Very cool. Simple. So when you guys get the money for this thing, are you going to use it to help develop the app? Where does the prize money and all of the prestige go in helping to really get it up and out there for folks to use? Well, the, the prize for the competition actually is, well, for this stage, it's $120,000 worth of technology. So it's not money in itself. Okay. Um, you get more tools. But, yeah, to exactly. But even if we don't win, I'm definitely going to advance in producing this app and developing it, making it available to everyone. Okay, well, your Doppler effect, your hair is oh. on the mic right now. So we want the people to hear very clearly about where and how they can vote for the team from Brooklyn Tech. And how many so times can they vote? As many times as you want. As many times as you want? <laughs> it's... Yeah, go Isn't ahead. it one time a day? Yeah. Yeah, it's, so you, you okay. can vote every day. Listen, yes. it's <laughs> over the 31st. We yeah, got to get going. Busy. Brooklyn. Yeah. There's only three days to vote. So once a day, you can vote where? It's one vote per user per day mm -hmm. on Instagram and Twitter. And you have to use hashtag Samsung Solve and hashtag Samsung Solve BTHS in the same post. Okay. I try not to whip out my phone <laughs> because they yell at me, but I think I get a pass. Uh, well, I had my phone out when I was over there, and it's so interesting because uh, even just last week, it was somewhere in Boston, uh, there were some girls sitting out there, and they said, hey, we almost got hit by a car two minutes ago, hashtag Samsung Solve BTHS. So it's really a national thing and people are able to just sort of say like hey you know it's affecting us over here and it's affecting you over there as well where is vision zero going how how is it growing yeah well you know from where we are a few years ago it's really remarkable i feel like you know four or five years ago 
um, there was very little attention to these issues. And we have a long way to go, but we've come a long way to actually uh, the prior DOT Commissioner Jeanette Sadiq Khan, who started doing a lot of work to get our streets made safer for pedestrians, for cyclists. She's doing a national book tour around her book called Street Fight, and she was in Brooklyn last week or the week before uh, talking about some of the work we've done on Prospect Park West and elsewhere. And then Mayor de Blasio established Vision Zero, and, and DOT Commissioner Polly Trottenberg have moved forward. And we have uh, pushed those crashes, those fatalities down, uh, largely through improving the streets themselves. You know, they just did a big remake of Queens Boulevard, the Boulevard of Boulevard Death, of and death real, uh, yeah. switching, you know, doing engineering to make the streets themselves safer. Cars go slower if there's not so many big wide lanes and there's, uh, you know, bulb outs so pedestrians can cross safely. So we've still got a lot of that to do all around the city. It takes time and uh, and money, some things can become quickly, but some things really need concrete pour. And the, uh, there is ramped up enforcement, so the NYPD are doing more enforcement of speeding and of failure to yield. Those are the two biggest driver actions that cause uh, crashes and uh, injuries and fatalities. And so we got to get people to slow down and to yield, and so there's more enforcement. Uh, we're trying a real creative thing at the uh, Red Hook Community Justice Center where low-level in, uh, infractions by drivers are being treated like problem-solving, like they do. So rather than just get a ticket, you watch a video uh, or meet a, a family member of a victim or someone who was themselves hit, right. so that hopefully before you do it again, you think twice. So in New yeah. Jersey, there was something in the legislature where they're trying to introduce a bill about uh, distracted walking, essentially yeah. texting while you're walking, where they would make it the sort of same level as jaywalking, where you could get a fine or even some time in the clink for doing it. But I imagine this would tail. help solve that even, <laughs> because if your phone sends you an alert while you're walking that you're being put into danger, it could save you while you're doing the bad thing, potentially. Well, the app itself, we were thinking of having it like watch, downloaded, so. yeah, downloaded on your phone, but it's, wor it's working on the app so that when you're crossing the street, you don't stop in the middle of the street, right. take out your phone, look <laughs> at it, and by then it's probably already too late. Yeah. So, like, if you're not spending the time to do this, you can move back. Save your life. You know, yeah. we only have a few minutes left, but I just want to thank you just for your amazing commitment mm -hmm. uh, to this endeavor and remembering your friends. And, you know, so many of us, even when Vision Zero was announced, it was like, that's going to be a, that's a lofty goal. You can but thank her by voting on Instagram. Every day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, you know, it's just amazing what you've been able to do with the, with the Vision Zero Youth Council as well. And I just want to congratulate you and to anyone who's listening, you know, to thank join you. in because you are actually saving lives. This is just the first step we imagine. We're looking yes. forward to big things from you and your team <laughs> over at Brooklyn Tech. You want to give a shout out to any of the people you work with over there yeah, and tell us how to vote again? Of course. How about it? Uh, ben Spiegel, he was a great help with the app development in itself. Uh, my best friend Hanine Dari, she was in the video. And Ricardo Monaco, he was also in the video. And of course, our advisor, Richard Capozzi. And my parents. Yes. And my brother. <laughs> <laughs> All right, team Brooklyn Tech, tell us again what we need to do so you get those votes once a day into the 31st. It's on Instagram and Twitter using hashtag SamsungSolve and hashtag SamsungSolveBTHS. All right, Samsung right. Solve BTHS. That's the big thing. Brooklyn Technical High School. Yeah. That's what it stands <laughs> for. Instagram and Twitter. All right. Yes. All right.